Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 5th of October 2011. Yesterday I bet you all thought I was going to talk about the 54th anniversary of the launch of Sputnik, or the 7th anniversary of Spaceship One winning the Asari Prize. And indeed I was. But today's the 5th, so we'll ask a different question. The Liberals in Quebec have won the Westmont seat twice in a row. What does the winner of that election have to do with today's date and a first in the space program? The answer will be given at the end. Although we've had some more spots appearing on the sun, some of which are quite large, we've had relatively few flares. In the last 48 hours we've had just three C flares. However, the X-ray background seems to be increasing and the frequency of the flares in the last 24 hours has increased. So let's take a look at the active regions and see if we can sort out what's going on. Currently we have six officially numbered regions on the disk. We lost 1302 over the northwest limb yesterday and regions 1307 and 1308 became spotless plages over the last 48 hours. We have three newly numbered regions. Region 1310 is in the south near disk center. Region 1311 is in the southeast. And we have region 1312 which is the large sunspot that came over the northeast limb yesterday. We do have three as yet unnumbered regions on the disk, uh, including a very strong region coming over the southeast limb as we speak. So let's start by looking at regions 1305 and 1306 near the northwest limb. The main spot in region 1305 does not seem to have changed a great deal. However, the region seems to have lost most of its trailer spots, so I think it's decaying quite rapidly. Similarly, region 1306 went from a fairly large spot with a penumbra to two small spots, and so that too is decaying. Next we should turn our attention to the northeast limb, where we have regions 1309 and 1312. Region 1309 has not shown a great deal of development over the last 48 hours. However, Region 1312 is a huge spot, but it's just a single spot with no uh, satellite spots or trailer spots. And as such, it probably is not going to produce a great deal of activity anytime soon. Region 1310 in the south looked so promising a couple of days ago, growing rapidly. However, it seems to reverse course and is decaying slightly. However, you can see just somewhat to its east and north, there is a small region developing. We'll see if that does any better. Region 1311 in the southeast came up very rapidly, but even though the leader spot seems to have grown quite a bit, it seems to have lost some of its trailer spots. So we'll have to keep an eye on this region to see which way it's going to go. There's also a couple of tiny spots emerging just to its east, but it's too early to tell whether these are going to amount to anything. Last, but by no means least, is the new region coming over the southeast limb. This has produced at least one, possibly two of the sea flares that we've seen in the last 24 hours. But it's too close to the limb to really show very much of its structure, so we're going to have to wait for a day or two to see what's going on there. You will have noticed that none of the regions, apart from this one coming over the southeast, have produced any flares. So the remaining flares have been attributed to region 1302 on or behind the west limb. We can see also that the southern hemisphere is beginning to fill in with activity. Now whether this is a temporary phenomenon or a permanent one, We'll have to wait and see. However, still note that the southern regions are weaker, smaller and shorter lived than the ones in the north. So they've got a way to go before they reach the level of development that the northern hemisphere has done so already. Now let's take a look at the development of the sunspots in the magnetic field over the last 48 hours using the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And here I'd like you to particularly concentrate in the southeast quadrant and see the development of all these new regions and compare them in size and strength with those in the north. Unfortunately, we still don't have a complete set of uh, data from the uh, AIA instrument, but here I would like to point out that Region 1302 produced some very spectacular jets uh, yesterday. As I mentioned in the title of this video, we've had a spectacular coronal mass ejection off the northeast limb, and you can actually see that coronal mass ejection in the uh, low temperature coronal move if you look very, very carefully. In the high temperature image from the GOES SXI, you can see that there's a very bright region behind the northeast limb. That's probably the same region that produced this CME and the one that was coincident with the um, incoming comet a couple of days ago. And if anybody still has any doubts about that uh, comet CME association, see the astronomy picture of the day for the 4th of October. Now for the coronal mass ejection. It appears above the northeast limb at about 1300 on the 4th and is absolutely magnificent, just very beautiful. Here it is first in the C2 uh, uh, field of view and then in the lar much larger lower resolution C3 field of view. It's spectacular both ways. 
It also looks as though there might be something about ready to go on the southeast limb. There is a coronal streamer there that is getting very bright and broadening, which is usually a good indicator that a coronal mass ejection is about to occur. We also seem to have had some sort of event in the uh, solar wind. You can see that the temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind suddenly increased about two or three hours ago. That may be one of the coronal mass ejections we've seen in the last few days just brushing past us. The high energy electron flux has been at high levels for the last 48 hours, but is now beginning to fluctuate as it drops. And there have been no proton events in the last two days. The auroral zone is showing signs of quieting down, as is the KP index, which has been around about the level 2 for the last two days. And NOAA is not carrying any space where the warnings at the moment. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B5 level, the sunspot number has risen to 126, the radio sun intensity is 130 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has increased to 440 kilometers per second, solar wind density is very high at 12 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are currently rated as quiet. My forecast is going to remain remarkably similar, with C flares being likely, M flares being possible, and X flares at the moment being unlikely. Sunspot number should remain high, coronal mass ejections are likely, the solar wind speed should go higher, and a geomagnetic storm is still possible. Looking at the composite coronal image, we can see that there is no major regions due back for three or four days. The answer to the trivia question was that Mark Renault was elected as a representative for the Westmount District, and in 1984 became the first Canadian to fly in space. He flew a total of three times and eventually became the head of the Canadian Space Agency. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.